Before the era of quantum mechanics, famous scientists such as Maxwell, Boltzmann, Gibbs applied statistical methods with the help of classical physics. Here, particles, although physically identical, are treated as distinguishable, because their position and velocity are assumed to be traceable. This means their trajectory over time is deterministic, thus allowing us to effectively label each particle, like how I do it here with the different colors. In this video, we will derive this classical statistical distribution law, or the probability of how classical particles distribute across different energy levels of different degeneracies, using the result of the system multiplicity we derived in previous videos, with link in the description. The total multiplicity m of our classical system of distinguishable particles is given in terms of the number of particles n j distributed across the different e j energy levels, where the degeneracy for level j is denoted as g j. The total multiplicity m is then given by the multiplicity d, which denotes the number of ways of distributing n j particles across the different e j energy levels, multiplied by the product of all the m j, which denotes the number of ways of arranging the n j particles within each e j level. For example, Consider a three energy level system, with the number of particles and degeneracy for each level as indicated. Using the formulae, we can calculate the multiplicity m for each level, and the multiplicity d. We can work out the total number of arrangements in this system to be about 3.8 millions, a very large number indeed. In order for us to proceed to the next step, we need to first borrow an equation from Ludwig Boltzmann tombstone. Here, the entropy S has a definition in terms of the number of microstates, given by k sub b the Boltzmann constant multiplied by the natural log of the system multiplicity m. An important insight by Boltzmann into the second law of thermodynamics is the realization that isolated systems spontaneously evolve towards thermal equilibrium, the state of maximum entropy. Let's work out the entropy of the system using the Boltzmann definition of entropy. We substitute the multiplicity expression into the logarithm, which then allows us to write the product of the multiplicity of the different energy levels as a sum of logarithms. Next, we recall the Stirling approximation as shown, which in the limit of large x allows us to write it in a form without the factorial. Applying the Stirling approximation then allows us to arrive at an expression for the entropy without any factorials. This will serve to be very expedient in our next steps of the derivation. Next, taking the Q from Boltzmann, to find the particle distribution at equilibrium, we should seek to maximize the system entropy, while at the same time imposing the constraints on the total energy and the number of particles. This doesn't look solvable at first glance, but in mathematical optimization, the method of Lagrange multipliers is a well-known strategy for finding the local maxima and minima of a function subject to equality constraints, which is what we are going to use here. To solve this trio of equations, we shall resort to the method of Lagrange multipliers. The method of Lagrange multipliers is a strategy for finding the local maxima and minima of a function subject to equality constraints. We introduce an auxiliary function L, which consists of the entropy S which we seek to maximize, in addition to the two constraints. We seek to find the Lagrange stationary point with respect to the number of particles at each energy level I. To proceed, we first have to find the stationary point for the entropy S. Recall the entropy expression we derived earlier with Stirling approximation. We can work out the stationary point for the entropy by taking differentiation with respect to N sub I. The results are shown here, in terms of the degeneracy and the number of particles for each energy level. Returning back to the Lagrange stationary point, we can now substitute the entropy stationary point into the expression. The terms involving logarithms can be combined, and with some algebra, we can arrive at an expression for the particle occupation for energy level I, which is the ratio between the number of particles n sub i to the total available states g sub i at that energy level. This occupation factor is the classical Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution function we are after, and what is left is only to determine the Lagrange multiplier constants alpha and beta. The way to determine the constants alpha and beta is to compare our microscopic expression of the total energy with that of the thermodynamic law. We begin with our microscopic definition of the total energy of the system and express the total energy U in terms of its differential form. Since we are only interested in the variation of n, we can eliminate the first term. We also recall our Lagrange multiplier equation, and obtain an expression for the energy level. Substituting this into the differential of U expression, we obtained a new expression for the differential U in terms of the differential of entropy S and total particles number N. We recall the well-known thermodynamics law. A quick comparison to our microscopic expression of the total energy differential to the thermodynamics law allows us to relate temperature T to 1 over beta, and the Fermi energy to the minus of alpha divided by beta. With this, we can easily determine beta to be 1 over temperature T, 
and alpha to be minus the Fermi energy divided by T. This then allows us to arrive at the final expression of the classical Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution function. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes. Join our Free Science Academy Discord channel to discuss science and technology. High school students are welcome to join and post your questions, we will answer them during our free time.